Awesome. Well, good evening, everyone. I'm Daniel Keough. I'm a librarian here at the Los Gatos Library. Um, and thank you so much for being here. I know we're in this in-between place between kind of being in person for things and kind of being online. So we, we love that you're joining us here virtually. And um, thank you for being here for this awesome program about growing great bok choy. Tonight, we're gonna to learn about the wonderful varieties of bok choy available, as well as how to plant, grow, and harvest bok choy. Um, we're joined tonight by Master Gardener Eugene Wong, as well as with Master Gardener Donna Lee, who will be helping monitor the chat, and our support Master Gardener Janelle Vance. And we're so lucky to have some real experts here with us from the UC Master Gardeners of Santa Clara County. Um, make sure you stay tuned to their event calendar. They, they have lots going on. Um, it's always, always wonderful. And I just want to thank the Friends of Los Gatos Library. Um, they support all of our programs. You can make a donation or sign up um, to volunteer for them at their website, uh, which is just friends of Los Gatos, friends of lglibrary.org. Um, and their bookstore is open again Wednesdays through Sundays from 1 p.m. to 5 p.m. You can also donate books at their door any Tuesday or Thursday from 1 to 3. Um, and yeah, the library is open if you didn't know. So uh, we still require masks whenever you're inside, but we are open seven days a week from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. So come down, get some books and say hi. And if you don't have a library card yet, we can get you set up. Um, and you can always call or send us a chat on our website at 11 to 5 or 11 to 6 every day of the week. And so with that, I'm going to go ahead and pass it over. I don't know if you wanted to say anything, Janelle. Otherwise, I would pass it over to Master Gardener Eugene Wong. Hi. So let me uh, share my uh, screen here. And everybody see that okay? We're going to learn about growing bok choy today. I'm going to change this view here. Okay. So I'm Eugene Wong, and Donna Lee is the co author of this uh, presentation. And we're both master gardeners with the UCCE Master Gardener Program of Santa Clara. County, and uh, she's going to be actually be giving the same talk online in Mandarin on August 25th. So you can look for that uh, sign up. This uh, presentation will give you an introduction to uh, what bok choy is and how to grow it. If you have any questions, you can enter it in the chat feature on Zoom or ask at the end of the presentation when we have uh, questions and answer period. Okay. All right. So. Uh, University of California is uh, master program, master gardener program is a group of trained volunteers where we help uh, teach uh, scientific uh, methodologies for growing uh, fruits and vegetables and of all sorts, uh, ornamentals as well. We have a help desk, which can be found at uh, at the website um, mgsantaclara.ucanr.edu. And uh, that website is useful for a lot of things. Uh, first of all, you can go there and find out uh, how to sign up for the monthly newsletter with the gardening tips and the events. Uh, you can find out about our demonstration gardens. You can find out where they're located in their hours. We also have uh, Events from time to time, um, during non-COVID time, we had the garden markets where you can buy seedlings uh, during the fall and the spring. But we also uh, coordinate with other organizations as well. We have booths there sometimes. We also provide free classes and talks just like this one. Uh, we also provide speakers that can go to an organization. And uh, in general, you can come to the uh, website for just general garden help. Okay. You can also find the uh, information about the UC Master Gardener program at this link, um, basically at the same website, uh, find us and you can uh, get more information there. Okay. Um, bok choy is really a, a whole wide classification of uh, vegetables, uh, generally in the class of brassica. Um, so it's in the family called brassicae, 
Brassicacea. And uh, there's a whole bunch of cruciferous vegetables. Uh, they're all a variety of non-heading Chinese cabbage, um, also known as bok choy and a number of other pronunciations. They all originate in uh, Central Asia. And it's one of the oldest cultivated vegetables and dates way back to the fifth century. Um, these vegetables are vitamin A and C, uh, has more beta carotene than broccoli. So this is an interesting vegetable to have. It's got many forms, colors, and names. Um, you see uh, the various names written in Chinese here. Uh, you see them with green stems, with green stems, white stems, uh, short, long, uh, very uh, wide leafy vegetables. Uh, they can be as short as six inches or as tall as 18 inches. Uh, many of the uh, seed catalogs use names like bok choy or pak choy or uh, differentiated by a white stem or green stem. But there are many hybrids, including a bolt resistant type. Uh, we'll talk more about those later. These uh, vegetables have a mild cabbage-like flavor. Uh, the stalk is usually crunchy and juicy textured. Uh, some of the bok choys uh, with the more spoon-shaped stalks and green stemmed varieties are considered tastier. So when should we plant it? Well, since it's a cool season Asian vegetable, you want to plant it in uh, early fall or early spring. And we're really talking about early January, February because you wanna avoid bolting because as the temperature goes outside of the ideal range of 55 degrees to 70 degrees Fahrenheit, they can bolt. In other words, they grow to flower and then they don't taste as good uh, in some cases. Um, you can plant them with, uh, by putting seeds in the soil uh, and the ground uh, in mid-September to avoid the heat wave. Uh, it'll take about two to 15 days to uh, sprout. The advantage of direct sowing in the fall is that ground is warmer for the fall crop. So you can avoid the transplant shock that normally would take place if you started indoors and then try to move it outdoors. But in the spring, you're going to uh, probably start it four to five weeks indoors uh, in containers and then uh, transplant it. Um, the uh, fall crop can be started as early as in August. And as soon as the heat wave is over in mid-September. So um, if you plant it too early, the sudden change in temperature might cause the young plant to bolt. In preparation for uh, planting, uh, you can grow bok choy in pretty uh, much any sunny area that's well drained and has uh, moisture retentive uh, soil because the bok choy has a relatively shallow root. So uh, it's finely branched, so it doesn't uh, grow down too far. So you wanna prepare the soil and probably wanna work in about an inch of uh, well-rotted manure in the top inch, uh, top six inches uh, of soil. And you can improve the soil by adding uh, compost as well. But don't use fresh manure because uh, it would, may have harmful bacteria and also the amount of nitrogen that's there might uh, cause harm to the roots. Okay. As mentioned before, you can sow the seeds in place in uh, September. And since the seeds are very tiny, um, it's easiest to sow the seeds in uh, moist soil and just uh, cover it very lightly with about one fourth to at most a half an inch of soil. Uh, even without putting any soil on top of it, you just brush your hand over it and that'll be enough to cover the seeds. 
um, any more than half an inch uh, deep and uh, you might not uh, get germination or at least you won't see it because what happened is that the seeds will uh, have the ceiling emerge and it'll run out of energy with not enough energy to push through all the soil so the plant will die you can uh, space the seeds out uh, by an, an inch or so um, or you can sow it thickly so that in about a week or two you can start uh, harvesting the microgreens for your salads and uh, stir fry. These, uh, this method of thinning the crops uh, means that you can eat them as, you know, as soon as they start showing. Uh, they're really tender and tasty. It's a nice thing to be able to start eating it that early instead of waiting. Bok choy, of course, needs water. It needs good and consistent soil moisture. Too little or too much water can cause bolting. And so it's important to keep the soil moist at all times, but not soaking wet. Um, a lack of moisture will cause it to uh, prematurely bolt and you get a poor quality plant. Uh, bok choy really needs about one inch of water per week and and the soil would remain moist between waterings but not soggy. Uh, you also want to be careful not to get the leaves wet so don't uh, spray water from above. We cause a number of problems with mildew and other things. So as mentioned, you can uh, directly sow into the ground and get it fairly thick, uh, like what we've done in this picture here. Um, you can see that we have had a number of uh, plants there. And then what we do, did is start pulling some of these seeds, uh, seedlings out to harvest as microgreens for salads and stir fries. And you can do that, you end up leaving some of the stronger plants uh, about six or eight inches apart. Or what you could do is uh, just uh, transplant them too as they uh, get larger. Uh, you also see in the background in this picture that we have this uh, uh, thin cloth. It's called a row cover. And it's a very thin cloth which will allow sunlight to get through and also water to get through. but uh, what we've done is put it over there to prevent pests getting in. So flying insects, snails, slugs can't go in. Uh, so as I mentioned, thinning them, uh, you can pull the plants out from in between, move them to another area uh, like we've done here. We've uh, moved it from this uh, area here into a, a wider spacing um, where you can give them away to friends in pots. But by thinning it out, by uh, taking out the plants, you can really start enjoying the vegetables early on. And you can continue this week after week. And as the plants get larger and stronger, you can transplant them and give them more room to grow also means that as you transplant them, they have uh, different ages. They, they will mature at different times. This will also prolong your harvest over the season. That's a useful thing to do. It's almost like succession planting. Protecting it from pests, there are numbers of pests. Um, there are a possibility of worms like caterpillar, loop, loopers, cabbage worm, aphids, beetles, white flies, snails, slugs. These are just some of the many pests that can be uh, seen. Uh, like for instance, on sure we have a caterpillar uh, and then there's a later stage, the pupa stage, which is the resting stage before they become a moth or a butterfly. Uh, the lightweight road cover is really the best way to stop them. And especially uh, uh, if the weather is warmer, uh, pests will find your new growth uh, very easily. 
So you want to be careful to check your crops weekly to make sure you find remove any eggs or uh, caterpillar dying, uh, take them off. Uh, for snails and slugs, it's best to go out at night with a flashlight and look for them. You can pick them off uh, and put them in uh, uh, a pail of soapy water or put them in a plastic bag and throw them in the garbage. Uh, it's important to remove their hiding places. They like to hide in uh, cool, uh, dark places uh, such as underneath the uh, boards. Um, maybe you might have uh, cinder blocks with the holes in them. Uh, you might have cardboard. We found some in the cardboard uh, that we had out to be able to make it easy to walk on. You can also control pests using uh, sticky traps. And these are yellow uh, plastic uh, uh, sheets with uh, sticky material on it. And they're often uh, impregnated with a uh, hormone to attract certain pests. And you can use it to attract and capture the uh, flying adults that get stuck on there. Uh, this will help end the cycle infestation because uh, the uh, sticky trap not only just let you know that you have pests that can be caught, but uh, they'll let you know what kind of pest to see on the The reason it's important to uh, capture the adults is that uh, if we look at life cycle of butterflies and moths, for example, you will see that the adult lays the eggs on the leaves and quite often it's on the bottom sides of leaves. They manage to put it out of sight. Uh, you have on both sides of the leaves to look for these things. Uh, then the eggs hatch and you get a larva, which we call a caterpillar. And those are very voracious. They will eat many holes in your leaves. Uh, they will eat um, and become nice and fat. And then they grow into a pupa. And there they will uh, wrap themselves in this uh, kind of a cocoon, uh, which then uh, will be a resting stage where the mature adult will hatch from. The adult will come out of this pupa at a later stage. Um, we also um, can mention um, cutworms. Uh, these are insects that come mature in the ground, actually. They, they, uh, uh, adults fly and leave their eggs in the ground and the caterpillars come out of the ground and they climb up the stalk and start chewing. And quite often they chew the entire stem. That cuts down the entire plant. And that's why they're called cutworms. Um, the looper uh, caterpillar also turns into a moth. And you've probably seen the beautiful white butterflies. Those uh, young larvae are called cabbage worms. They're green and green caterpillars. So those are some of our pests. Back to the subject of bolting. When uh, plants uh, get some kind of shock, they can slow down its growth. But uh, for the spring planting, you want to sow your seeds directly into the uh, nitrogen rich soil as soon as all danger of frost has passed because you want this ground to be warm enough to germinate the seed. The ideal temperature for bok choy is between 55 degrees and 70 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, but be aware that bok choy plants uh, can bolt when the nighttime temperatures drop below 55 degrees as well. Uh, young bok choy plants uh, bolt quickly and they bolt as quickly as mature ones. So it depends on the temperature. Uh, flowering bok choy isn't necessarily a disaster because uh, many people find that the flowers and stalks are just as tasty and tender uh, uh, stir fries and
You can also select uh, slow bolting uh, or slow uh, resistant uh, to bolting uh, vegetables. Um, for example, uh, the bowl pack uh, type of seed from Territorial Seed Company has been proven to be a good, good uh, grower. Uh, it was tested at the South County Teaching Demo Garden in Gilroy in 2020. And they had 45 plants of different varieties planted on February uh, 2020. And they found that the white stemmed bok choys bolted on by the end of uh, March. And the joy choy also uh, bolted uh, near the end of uh, March, but still wasn't uh, bolted at that time. So that's shown that uh, was able to last a little longer. So that's just something to keep in mind. Yeah, all the bok choys are uh, rapid growers. Uh, as mentioned, you can harvest them early microgreens. You could harvest them as baby leaves, uh, or you could har har harvest them as mature bunches. So lots of opportunities. Uh, as far as planting for uh, microgreens, remember, you use seeds that haven't been treated with an insecticide or fungicide. These uh, seed treatments have a pre-harvest uh, time interval, which dictates the amount of time that uh, must pass between the pesticide application and the time of harvest. So microgreens are ready to harvest between 8 to 16 days. So the uh, pre-harvest interval hasn't been hasn't elapsed yet. You don't want to be eating those. So therefore, you want to use untreated seeds. You can harvest it uh, all the way from six inches up to full size. Uh, as I mentioned, 12 to 18 inches. In so as you can har harvest it in all these different stages, you can as a microgreen has cut and come again cropping by cutting the outside leaves. You can continue leaving the plant growing. You can uh, thin the crop until it reaches mature size. So as a summary, you know, when you have, we've shown that you can plant bok choy in well-drained, moisture-retentive soils with adequate nitrogen, full sun, at the right time in the fall or early spring, with enough water to keep it moist but not soggy. You can uh, manage to keep pests to a minimum. You can really enjoy a long harvest uh, over the entire growing season of a delicious and versatile vegetable. So we have a number of references, and for some of you, uh, you can see the first is the website, uh, MG Santa Clara, UCANR, EDU. And this same website can be reached pointing your cell phone uh, camera at this uh, uh, QR code. I'll uh, give you a shortcut into this instead of typing it all, but it's the same thing. I'll leave this up on the screen. You can do that at your leisure. Uh, let me tell you what's here. Uh, we also reference a planting chart that I uh, find in, in, important, uh, valuable. Uh, you can go to this uh, website. The first place you find is the vegetables subcategory. Uh, you can go to the planting chart. You can uh, look at other references that we have here at your leisure. Um, at this point, I'd like to turn it over for questions and answers. Uh, if there's any questions, I, I think uh, if the moderator can enable people to chime in, we can accept verbal questions.
Eugene, can you go back one slide? Um, what, somebody that's capturing your URLs missed one, and I'm hoping it's on, she says on the last slide, but I hope you didn't, maybe one more slide. Is there a URL on one more slide back? Oh, the URLs are oh, this Okay, one. yeah, that's the URLs. Those are. This so. is a URL here of the upper right hand. Just point your camera at that. Sure, I get you yeah. That. yeah, that's the easiest. Sure. Um, really quick, you mentioned the um, temperatures, ideal yes. temperatures to grow, and I missed it because there was noise in the background here. Can you repeat what your daytime and nighttime temperatures were? 55 degrees to uh, about 70 degrees is up. Okay. But it, it'll, it'll uh, do well in cold temperatures or slightly warmer temperatures. Okay, thanks. Donna, do we have any other questions? Yes, there's a uh, question about fertilizing. Um, I, I started to answer that uh, usually we, uh, we, we suggest people to do a soil test first. Uh, if you do it at uh, uh, universities, some universities, it's not that expensive, like $9 or something. So um, this soil test gives, gives us a lot of information about how rich your soil is, do you really need to fertilize or not? Uh, we found that in our uh, demo garden at uh, McLen uh, McLennan, that the soil is very rich. We didn't have to um, add additional fertilizer at all. But if you but from the beginning and uh, hasn't, the, the soil hasn't been really uh, fertilized before, you probably want to start with a balanced one and uh, side dressing a um, um, nitrogen ready one, a heavy one later on. So I kind of answered that. Uh, usually our shape. soil is uh, pretty well uh, behaved and the the one element that might be a little bit low might be nitrogen. So uh, with a little bit of something that has nitrogen in it, uh, usually uh, compost or uh, alpha pellets or something like that at the beginning when you're planting uh, can help. But otherwise you don't need too much fertilizer. Nitrogen is usually the only one's missing. Okay, next. Uh. That is, uh, someone asked if uh, 50 to 70 degree is that for uh, growing or for germina germination? So the germination, I, I would say that the germination temperature is closer to 70 degrees. Right, so 50 to 70 is for growing. Yeah. During the growing. Yes. yes, yeah. So another question is how we enjoy September or early spring planting in South Bay? September to December or February to May? Okay. That's a question. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Yes, you can grow. <laughs> Actually, you might be able to answer that question better. <laughs> yeah, as we uh, kind of said that in, in the presentation earlier, Eugene had mentioned that earlier, that from September, uh, you can harvest by, um, you can eat throughout September to January. Uh, and that was what we did last year. Uh, but when we plant the spring one, we find it start to bolt easily. So, um, so February to May, I think it's a little optimistic because like you see in our, the result of our test, um, the result of our research garden in, at Gearoy, that uh, several, several uh, of the varieties they test with, along with all the variety I tried with in the in last year. And they seems like all bold very quickly. Uh, in, in February, in March, they all bolted. So uh, because it's all because of global warming, we, we, 
our temperature is so high now in spring. So we have difficulty um, uh, keeping it away from boating. So we suggest in this presentation that you buy the, when you eat, make sure it's the kind of seed that is, um, is both resistant. So we mentioned, we mentioned one um, place you can buy. And I think okay. Eugene, you have the catalog. Territorial. Territorial. You have the catalog. Yeah. Territorial Seed uh, Company, and uh, it has a uh, bowl resistant kind. Uh, um, uh, I think you, Eugene, you want to you want to uh, move to that slide page, Eugene. You want to move move to that slide page to show uh, which kind we recommend. I think they have a uh, they have a uh, on your slide. They have a um, a variety that is bowl resistant. Are you are you did you know yourself for you, Jing? So I accidentally mailed to myself. Okay. Can you move to the slide? Choose which variety is uh, oh, more resistant. The share that requires some doing here. That requires me to reshare. Which slide did you what? The the bow resistant uh, varieties. This one. Yeah. Go back. Um, Territorial Seed Company. That was yeah. the one that was tested in Gilroy. Right, right. Um, and that's where we find this bow resistant one. So look through your favorite. Um, seed catalog to see if they have other bowl resistant kind if, if you um, been buying seeds from catalog. Uh, I suggest that's a better place to buy seeds than, um, than big box company like Home Depot or um, Costco or something because um, some nurseries because some um, because they you wouldn't be able to tell if this white skin, white stain or, or green stain, if this is the kind of favorable, favorite varieties you like or not. So, um, but at least the catalog uh, show you the pictures and uh, give you a description about this, uh, this seed you are buying. So you have better chance to get the kind you like. Uh, Heidi, 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 maybe I can ask my question. Yes, please do. Oh, I can't hear you guys. <laughs> Heidi, can you okay. can you just talk to to us? Can you can you mute yourself? Unmute yourself. Go ahead, Heidi. We can we could hear you before. Sorry, I'm here. I don't know if you guys are Heidi. Heidi. Sorry, I lost volume for some reason. Um, no, so I was just asking since I was since it doesn't seem like there's a way to really get a long growing season unless I plant a really big garden of this and you know space it out. And still, I'm limited to the winter. It. What's the advantage of growing your own versus just buying it. Are there a lot more tastier varieties in the different seeds? Much more variety than you would find at most grocery stores. <laughs> yeah. But they're tastier, right? Or there are some. Yes. Healthy. Some of them are quite tasty and some of them are, uh, 
you know, a lot of different varieties. Um, I, I, yeah, I think the advantage is that uh, we grow starting from basement. September and we have several months continuously um, supply of the new fresh uh, green vegetables, starting from microgreen all the way to, um, to harvest the last one, which is in one of the picture is huge. Uh, but even the even when it's big, it still tastes tender. There's no no fiber in the in the bai chai. So this is the best candidate you can grow for a long time and uh, continue continuously eating it at different stage, and still be very tasty and uh, easy to manage. Uh, and especially when you grow in the winter, and the pests are not um, are not. Uh, Available. I mean, not too many pests like ever. Not as many pests. Will not be yeah, there. Because they're cooler. Will not be there yet. Yeah, because it's cooler. So I have a lot of snails. Will putting that white paper stop them from getting in? Like if I put it all the way around it, or just the, the uh, white uh, cloth uh, that we. The, 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 yeah. Yeah. To cover cloth, you want to completely secure on the ground. So there's no way they can get in. So that's one way of defense. Another way is that, uh, I think it's the most important way is to identify where they're coming from. Sometimes they're hiding uh, behind the cupboard, behind a uh, uh, center block, or somewhere close by. Uh, so pick them up during a night. So Eugene, you are muted too, are you? For Eugene, you say, I, I'm not muted, but thank you for your answer. Okay, I hope that's that answer your question. Um, so, yeah, thank you for, uh, yeah, the, the, the Neil post uh, um, the catalog for us. That well, that's one of the places we found the, the bowl resistant varieties, and that's where we, uh, we did the research. So usually master gardener, we, in our demo garden, we are always research for something to verify a theory, uh, like catalog company says this is all resistant and we want to see if it's true, if it's really working in our county. So we do that all the time. And sometimes we compare a new variety, we say it's existing one, to see if it's really an improvement or if it's not. Uh, so. I hope you, if you have time, come visit your local uh, demo garden. Uh, for Cupertino, we have a, uh, a, a new and improved McLennan uh, demo garden, but it's not uh, uh, open to public yet for visit. But we've been working there uh, for, for several months already. And then it looks like um, Margaret, I'm gonna see if Margaret, she put her hand up. I was gonna see if you can unmute Margaret. Uh, yes, thanks. My question is, um, I'm wondering if you have experience with growing the baby or extra dwarf bok choy varieties, and if you have like comments about those compared to the regular types. Um, like the, like in Chinese we say xiao bai cai, the, the little kind, which is only four inches. I mean, they are small anyway, maybe in, in, in uh, American version, they call that dwarf. And we usually like that kind. So let me tell you a personal story. I planted this wonderful bai cai I show you in all the pictures. And, uh, but my daughter was not pleased. She said, you planted the wrong kind. I want this little kind with green stand which we call Qingjiang Cai in Chinese or Xiao Bai Cai, little baby uh, Bai Cai. So that's a favorite and it tastes better for some people. So uh, definitely if you can find a baby Bai Cai, that's definitely you say a good variety. And especially if they say it's a uh, heat resistant, uh, that's even better. Eugene, you have something to add? My computer just crashed. <laughs> uh, 
So I joined you over here. My computer just crashed. <laughs> it's something. I it. Okay. Move that. Move that. That's okay. Over. Okay. okay. Yeah. You want something to add about? Uh, well, it's a question. <laughs> okay. Any other questions you have for Eugene and I? Looks like there's uh, Mabel has her hand up. I'm going to ask her to unmute. Uh, yes, I would like to ask, uh, where's the best place to buy those row covers since uh, bok choy has so many pests? Yeah, we, we bought ours online. It was pretty easy to find. From yeah, Amazon? It's just called row cover. Yeah. Uh -huh. Well, yeah. online from where? From Amazon or? Yeah, or? yeah. we got from, from Amazon. Amazon. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're, oh, from they're... Amazon? Yes. Yeah. Is there a specific, um, I don't know if they come in different sizes or different type of, but yeah, they, they come in different lengths. Different yeah. sizes and also different thickness. I mean, the thicker one is good to use for um, frost resistant. Like, like if you have tropical fruit or tropical um, kind of um, tropical trees or yeah, yeah trees plants. is too big for it. But there are some certain uh, very tender kind that you want to protect. Uh, and even vegetables, you could protect with the uh, low cover too. Uh, and the, but usually the same kind is good enough. So um, the thin row cover from Amazon and what kind of, um, well, do they have different type of attachments or it's all about the same? No, there's a, they don't sell attachment along with it. You can oh. um, you figure it out yourself. You can use uh, uh, staples that are normally used for uh, garden uh, cloth. Uh, you can use, um, you, you know, yeah, use pegs. The, yeah, yeah, of the bamboo stick that you can uh, staple the whole row. Or you uh, can do what we sometimes do is just use bricks to hold down the edges or pieces of wood. Okay, yeah. so for the so the bok choy can use the thin row cover then. Yes. Yes. Oh, okay. That's what we use. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Any other question? Do we miss anything? How often do you fertilize by side? Every two to three weeks with a liquid fertilizer or slow release fertilizer? Um, you want it depends on your soil condition. Uh, you know, it's hard to have a universal answer because uh, you'd want to over fertilize it because you get a lot of sun new growth and attract a lot of pests, um, but uh, especially in the warmer time. But from time to time, uh, as you need it, because these are green vegetables and, and the nitrogen will help uh, grow the leaves healthy. Yeah, I I mean, we after we prepare the, the, the soil, as we described in the slide, uh, I don't think I fertilize it uh, throughout we the season. We haven't needed to. Yeah, we didn't have to need to. But you, you can, if you want to, um, you can also, uh, Use a thin um, diluted, uh, diluted diluted solution. water yeah. solution. Um, so some you ask if it's liquid or, or slow release fertilizer. Either one. Usually um, the liquid one is more of a chemical kind. If you want to do uh, organic planting, you can use the slow release fertilizer. What we can do is before you. When you prepare the soil, you can mix with uh, um, alfalfa pellet uh, or some organic usually, fertilizer if, you, if yeah. you want. Yeah, so that will be enough for the whole season. Do I have to transplant then? How about plant directly in the garden? That's what we've been talking about, yeah. especially for winter planting. We, we um, plant it directly uh, on the ground because you can. Uh, now, there are several advantages of direct planting. Uh, one is that it's faster uh, because, it's start, because it's, it's after the summer. So the soil is still warm. So it's very easy for it to germ germinate. Uh, so we plant it directly to take advantage of that. And also, there's no delay of the, for the plant when we trans, uh, when we direct sow because when you transplant it, it will have a shock from the mm -hmm. transplant, and then the growth delayed. And as it's delayed, you get into the season that uh, you may get into the pest, you may get into um, the the boating. Uh, when the 
when the temperature is warmer. So, so you control the variables better when direct so. And also direct so, uh, in my case, my the, the, the experiment we did last year, is that we'll be, allowed, we'll be able to eat the vegetable all year long. I mean, all season long, starting from, because it germinated in, in a week, you can start eating yeah, the micro Yeah, be already that yeah. tall. <laughs> yeah, so you can start eating all, all season long and uh, it's, a, it's a very uh, satisfying that way. So you can try it away, see which way is more comfortable for you. Uh, but like Eugene said, if you want to eat the microgram, you want to make sure the seed has not been processed with uh, fertilizer, with uh, chemicals. Yeah. With chemicals, yeah. Okay. How, how often do you water? Um, well, basically, you need to find out how much water you're giving it. Uh, like I said earlier, you need to give it one inch of water per week. Um, the best way to do it is just put your finger in the soil and find out how moist it is. Uh, you want to make sure it stays moist, um, but not soaking wet. So uh, allow it some time to soak up the water, dry out, maybe you water every other day. Um, depends on the weather. I think the best depends way, on your soil. Yeah, the best way to do it is like what Eugene did for our garden. Uh, he put the, um, the dripping system. So how, what's your setup for the drip? Well, the drip system depends on your soil condition and the temperature and, uh, and the type of drip line that you use. Uh, you wanna measure how much uh, it drips per, uh, how, many, uh, how many gallons per hour, right? So uh, it's gonna vary for each household. Um, the most useful thing to do is water it once, Find out how moist it is and see if the next day how moist it still is. Pick up a handful of the soil, squeeze it in your hand, and see how well it holds together. And if it falls apart, then it's too dry. If it uh, squeezes water out of it, it's too wet. <laughs> it uh, sounds funny, but uh, it's just that simple. Well, there's also an advantage of using drip system is that um, you are not watering the leaves. So, so you are not top watering or sprinkle it. You see a hose to sprinkle it on. So yeah, because, you're not spraying. Yeah, you're not spraying the water to it. So that will attract uh, um, the pest if the, the leaf is wet. Yeah. Um, I saw a question earlier in the chat about someone who wanted to use gray water. So like um, capturing water from maybe their sink or a shower. Is it, if you use natural soaps, is it safe to do so or will it? I, I believe that uh, they do not recommend using gray water for edible crops, period. Okay, there's a health uh, hazard with that. So yeah, using gray water for ornamentals is fine. Thank you. Yeah, there's also a recommended kind of a soap doesn't have a foot. Uh, it doesn't have uh, doesn't chemicals have... that would hurt plants, but that's yeah. for ornamentals. Right. Really, gray water is for ornamentals. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. Is your... Oh, I'm sorry. What other Asia vegetable grow well in this area? Oh, you can grow almost any of the uh, Asian uh, uh, vegetables that are in the cabbage family, uh, cruciferous uh, vegetables, broccolis of all different sorts, uh, uh, the uh, cauliflower. Uh, no, Asia vegetable. Asian vegetables. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Uh, you can grow uh, uh, gailan. You can grow. Uh, let's see what's uh, another couple. Of words. Um, you mean I, are we talking about the cool season vegetables? Yeah, cool season. Okay. Um, the yeah, like like the Chinese cabbage, like the big one. Yeah, that the Napa cabbage. Napa cabbage that mm -hmm. requires a cooler, cooler time. climate. Yeah. So you can try it in uh, in in the fall, and uh, the the cooler it is, the better, the easier to grow. I didn't grow that because I, I'm impatient. I like to start eating mm -hmm. as soon as I grow. <laughs> yeah, you can also check on our website. Look under 
uh, the website, look under vegetables, then look under vegetable planting chart, and then look at the Chinese vegetable planting chart. Uh, you can you see some of those vegetables on there. Uh, but the, the, the English uh, version also lists those, uh, many of the same vegetables. Uh, yeah. All that's possible during the uh, September timeframe. Okay, yeah. So the question from, from, no, no, <laughs> 55 to 70 for growing, are this referring to day temperature or is 55 referring to the night temperature? We're, we're talking about the ground temperature. Yeah, I mean, 55 usually we, we may heat that at night. Uh, so it's the whole day temperature, day and night included. I'm talking about the temperature of the soil. Of yes. the soil, yeah. yes. Temperature yes. soil. Yeah. But all day long, it's not because they say it's uh, during the day or during the night. Yeah, yeah. no, the air temperature is not the, the causing factor. Yeah. Uh, temperature seems to be touching 80s, even in October. Yes. Yeah, but the ground is still cooler than 80 degrees. Right. The ground's not 80. Right, yeah. The Chinese version in Excel format, not PDF. Hmm. Let me look into that. Usually, yeah. Uh, I think usually it's PDF. We yeah. Don't, uh, we, we don't like use the uh, raw form. Yeah. Right. It should be PDF. Okay. Yeah. Any other question we miss? It's hard to see. Once the uh, fly. <laughs> once the bunch of habits, does it grow back again? If it's early enough in the season, it'll continue growing. Like we've talked about uh, harvesting the leaves, it'll be cut and eat again. Cut and grow again. Okay. Please put Chinese version. Okay. Uh, is there anything else? I put in the water. Okay. Uh, I wanted to know how often should I water the bai chai? Is there anything I can put in the water to enhance the growth? Don't need to. Don't need to put anything in the water. As far as how often the water, it depends on the soil. So for the chemical, uh, the, the non-organic waste, that fertilizer, you have to dissolve in water before you use it. But for the organic one, you have to put in the in the soil in order for, for the uh, soil, uh, to, to soil organisms to break, it down. to break it down. So the way to apply it is different depending on its chemical or if it's uh, organic um, materials. materials. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like we mentioned, uh, alfalfa pellets. Yeah. We put those in the ground as dry yeah. materials. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, I had a question about growing in containers. So I typed sure. it there. Just, um, is that an option? So, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Since uh, these many of these vegetables have shallow roots, uh, it doesn't uh, require very deep of a container. Uh, yes, that would be a a good way to do it if you're limited in space. Yeah, as long as you manage hot. the water well. It won't get too hot because then it's really dependent on the air temperature more or? Uh, you want to you want to watch that because uh, pots, depending on what color they are, leaving in the sun, they would dry out very quickly, but you might need to water it every day to keep it moist and that keeps it cool enough. Yeah, yeah, you need to water more often when it's in pot than in, in the ground. Because it's fast draining. Yeah, fast draining and evaporate faster. Just one more quick one. If I have some seeds from last year because I didn't know it was a cool season mm -hmm. vegetable. So if I plant them now, will I see the bolting just so that I get an idea? So I get some practice in with the seeds from last year that I didn't. You can, you can uh, if it's only a year old, uh, many of the seeds uh, companies, you know, they say it's good for one year, but uh, you can actually keep seeds for two or three years. Yeah. As long as it's been kept out of the sun, it's not been overheated, it's not been moist. Yeah. Uh, you can still use it in the next season. Yeah. Uh, sometimes what I do is if uh, I have seeds that have been kept for many years, I would put more in because I know many of them will not start uh, that you need to over uh, seed in order to uh, 
uh, get enough vegetables out of all the seeds. Yeah, a lot of times the bai chai seeds can last for three years, but beyond that, uh, it's I have it's some that are good. five years old. <laughs> but you may not all, all sprout, right? Um, Thank you. Yeah, we do what we can. Okay, I think that just about wraps it up here. One um, more question, if you want to take yeah. one last question of if you can sure. save bai chai seeds. Bai chai seeds uh, can be saved, but you need to be cautious. All of the cruciferous vegetables crossbreed very easily. So if you're growing one type of vegetable, you want to make sure you have a pretty good distance between that and the next type of vegetable because they will crossbreed. And like, for instance, you have some white bai chai here and you have some green bai chai here and uh, they'll cross pollinate and you get some light green ones and some light white ones and uh, stuff. So you need to be careful, you can, but using the row cover between each types of plants, you can prevent the pollination of uh, these uh, seeds. Yeah. Uh, from crossbreeding. Yeah, usually I plant one kind at a time uh, since, since we have small yards, right? Yeah, you can plant uh, uh, broccoli, uh, cauliflower, and bok choy all at the same time, and they'll crossbreed and you get some strange stuff. I'm just yeah. saying, be cautious. No, I, they I, will think, crossbreed. I think it's only crossbreed within the same bai chai. There are many variety under bai chai. Then they may crossbreed, but Broccoli will not crossbreed to bai chai. That's what I'm trying to say. Are you sure? I am sure. Okay. We don't always agree. <laughs> I worry just. Because crossbreed under species in the category. Yeah, you're probably right. Yeah. Say it louder. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It, do we answer all the questions? We have a couple minutes left. That's okay. I think you did. I went back through the chat to make sure. I think you've covered everything that people asked. Okay. okay. Thank you. Well, thank you all for attending and we look forward to finding you online. Yeah, thank you, Eugene. Thank you, Donna, very much. Appreciate it. Thank you, Daniel. And uh, if there, I think we put all the links, almost all the links in, but the Master Gardener website is your main source of information uh, for everything. Um, I just saw something come through from Sally, sorry, in the chat. Oh, what should I do if I don't want to use roll, a oh, row cover? What do I do if, what did you do if you don't want to use row cover? For pests, I'm, I'm guessing for pests. You could just let them, uh, I mean, once your uh, bok choy grows to, uh, you know, fairly good size, uh, the number of pests that you get, it depends, right? Uh, how much damage they can do, it depends. Uh, if you're okay with it, you don't need to cover it. I mean, yeah. if you yeah. are wanting to <laughs> have perfect leaks, you want to cover it. Well, yeah, yeah my get. experience is we get holy vegetables why don't <laughs> use your <real> cover. <laughs> uh, question, I have a suggestion. Yes. Yes, I've been using, there's a new product called Slargo Plus. It's organic. That's and fine. That's that, good for the, for the snails and the slug. And, and Irwin. Irwin yeah, you, we, Irwin. we should use that. Um, but it won't do anything for your caterpillars. Yeah, but it uh, won't uh, help with or... like the, the picture we show the little worms there. And there are many, uh, Australia, many kind of uh, uh, pests can eat. Um, it depends where your garden is located than, too. Other than uh, slug and uh, snails. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Georgia, how did you spell, what was that product? Sluggo, S-L-U-G-G-O. But it has to be plus because the other one doesn't, is not organic, but Sluggo plus is organic. You could get it at Costco. Right. Yeah. yeah, my experience using it is that no matter which brand, I mean, the powder is powder, but then after you water it, it's kind of a mix with the soil. Yeah. So and also, Master Gardener doesn't recommend brands. How effective <laughs> that is. 
Yeah. Well, these so, are pellets. Yeah. Yeah. And real cover take care of all different kind of uh, pests. Yeah. That's why I like it. And since you don't need the pollination, you don't need the bees, you don't need the pollination. That's that's why it works. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. And I went ahead and put the link, I'll put it one more time for the Mandarin talk on August 25th with Sunnyvale Library. So anyone that's interested in listening to this talk in Mandarin and discussing right. in Mandarin, then we can do that with the Sunnyvale Library on August 25th. Um, yeah, anything else from, from you? Yes. Nothing from us. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Daniel, for organizing this. Yeah, thank and, you. Uh, Genial too, yeah. And thank you so much. This has been really great. Um, I've learned a lot. I think we've all learned a lot. So yeah, we really appreciate your expertise. Thank, thank you, everyone. Thanks. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Right. Have a good night, everybody. Bye. So please leave.